Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. This is Bitcoin News Today. We're going to look at three different subjects. We're going to look at text messages that become Bitcoin trades. There's a uh, an exchange, a cryptocurrency exchange out there where if you set up an account when you want to buy or sell Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, um, even beginners in 2020 can trade Bitcoin using text messages on this exchange. But unfortunately for most of us, this exchange is not available in our countries. But we're going to get into this news. This could be a feature that could sweep the globe in the near future. Time will tell. Also, we're going to look at the Bitcoin halvening as it hits new all-time highs. It's, this is amazing and has actually a great significance in the potential of the Bitcoin happening, and we're going to dig into that news. And then finally, we're going to ask the question, is Bitcoin a serial killer? And this will be a very interesting article. I thought it was great, and we're going to dig into its details. It'll be the last one in our video, so be sure to watch the entire video. You're going to love it. So, should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? That's what our channel is trying to answer. We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. So, can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It really helps us out and makes a huge difference. So, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And take a look at the rest of this disclaimer. It's information you need to know if you decide to make an investment into cryptocurrencies. Now, today is April 14th. It's currently 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. And at this moment, Bitcoin is trading at $6,834. It's up 2% in the last 24 hours. And so, as you can see, a lot of the market is green with a few holdouts that are still in red. But for the most part, everything is looking up at this, at this particular moment because this is cryptocurrency. Five minutes later, the whole thing could be green. The whole thing could be red. Everything could change dramatically. So, you just never know. The first thing we're going to look at is Venezuelan Crypto Exchange launches text messages for crypto transfer service. So, Crypto Cryptolago, a cryptocurrency exchange based out of Venezuela, has announced that it will be launching a service that will allow its users to play, place cryptocurrency orders through text messages. Wow! Whoever thought that you could use a text message to buy or sell or trade cryptocurrency? You know, Bitcoin for Ethereum, Ethereum for Tezos, uh, Tezos for Link, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't know all of the different cryptocurrencies that the Crypto Lago Exchange has, but I know that there's a number of them. They list a few right here, talking about Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, the country's official official Bolivar currency, because Venezuela does have its own central bank digital cryptocurrency, and then several others as well. So it also couldn't come at a better time for the country's crypto-loving citizens. Venezuelans appear to have awoken to the prospect of cryptocurrencies and how the assets could help them. And with the Petro looking more of a legitimate investment, looking like more of a legitimate investment, they will need more convenience. And so that's what the text messaging does, is provide them convenience. <clears throat> the need for the new service is also quite glaring. Late last month, Movie Star, the primary telecom provider for Venezuela, explained at, to Bloomberg that Venezuela internet infrastructure had been put under severe strain as a result of the virus lockdown. And so because people were staying at home, well, they, they actually get into that. As the firm explained, the entire world had no choice but to turn to the online space as both a way to continue working and to keep themselves entertained as they stay home. However, this has put a significant amount of pressure on the country's internet service over the past few weeks. And so 
the Venezuelan country as a whole has been using the internet to a larger degree and the infrastructure that they had built to provide internet service is on uh, is being stressed to a point it's never experienced before because there's never been that high of a demand. And so this is a huge increase in the over demand, overall demand for internet uh, providers, internet services, and they were not prepared for it. The strain could make cryptocurrency trading difficult since the cryptocurrency industry is still mostly internet dependent. However, with this new service, the text messaging service, things could get much better. People looking to make trades and purchase digital assets can now do so with less difficulty. And those who have taken the brunt lagging of lagging internet facilities now have a stable alternative. And so, you know, every one of us has experienced different times when web pages would sit there and you'd, you'd click on that web page and the thing would just hourglass and scroll and scroll and scroll and take forever for a page to load. Well, sometimes that has nothing to do with the website you're trying to connect to. It could be because your internet service provider is not giving you the bandwidth you need in order to, per, uh, to access that particular web page. And that's happening more and more down in Venezuela. While they may be hitting an exchange that's out of the country that has no issues with volume and, and production, uh, the bandwidth that you have to get to that particular website could be so blocked, so so used up uh, that it makes loading that web page uh, very, very difficult, and that definitely can interfere with your ability to make cryptocurrency trades, buys, sells, etc. And so, by being able to do this via a text message, this this is a, I think it's a great alternative, and I think that a lot of other services should look into providing that in other countries as well. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Search volume for Bitcoin having outflanks previous all-time highs. So, in interest, interest in the forthcoming having event on the Bitcoin blockchain has surged to levels higher than ever seen before. Data from Google Trends as of April 14th, which is today, indicates this year's peak interest in the event is 16% higher than back in 2016. 2016 is the last time we actually had a Bitcoin halvening. The last time the halvening occurred on the network. So the breakdown, the data geographically, this time focusing on the past 30 days, the top five countries showing the most interest are Luxembourg, Latvia, Estonia, Switzerland, and Lithuania. You know, if you had asked me to pick the top five countries that have an interest in the Bitcoin halvening, I wouldn't have picked a single one of these. I would have been, uh, Switzerland maybe, but I'm not sure if I would have put Switzerland on the list. And I, I would have expected um, some of the more, you know, United States or uh, something like that, Canada, I would have expected some of those to be on the list and they're, they're not even on the ballpark. So it's interesting you know, one of the things that that shows us, if, you, if you're like me and you live in the United States, we are so focused, you know, to, it's almost as if in the United States, the rest of the world doesn't exist. And so oftentimes it doesn't occur to us that the interest in Bitcoin in other countries is going to be more of a driver in terms of price and, and everything else regarding Bitcoin than what the U.S. is driving. And so while U.S. sentiment may not be anywhere near where it could be, uh, it's not what's going to drive, it looks to me like what's going to drive the, the, the future of Bitcoin is what's happening outside of the United States. You know, when you look at the interest in Bitcoin in South America or India or in many other places around the world, they are far more interested in Bitcoin than the United States. And so while we may, be, we may get left out to a certain degree, I think once we see Bitcoin surging, that'll turn, you know, the U.S. will turn very, very quickly uh, because that kind of stuff gets communicated quickly and um, it, people's confidence in that sort of thing can shift very fast. So... 
as a related and more narrow search term, term Bitcoin having 2020, so they just simply added 2020 to the search term, reveals a very different geographical distribution, with Nigeria topping the chart, followed by Venezuela, Austria, Portugal, and uh, Czechia. And so it, it, it continues to show how interest in countries outside of the United States, outside of Western countries, are far more, have a, have a larger degree of interest in Bitcoin and the Bitcoin halvening and what's happening in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency industry uh, than what, what is prevalent in the U.S. And so just, just some interesting stuff. And then finally, serial killer Bitcoin to explode this year, Pantera's Moorhead. So Bitcoin is a serial killer correlated with traditional risk assets only. When the world freaks out and the crypto markets are about to explode higher, according to one of the most prominent investors in the crypto space. The remarks were made by Dan Moorhead, CEO and co-founder of investment firm Pantera Capital. Pantera Capital has had a history of investing in Bitcoin and Bitcoin-related businesses for almost a decade. I think they're, they go back about eight or nine years and so very, very close to the beginning of Bitcoin. Um, and they have done some remarkable things as a hedge fund. So some call it digital gold. And yes, it's awesome. It is digital gold. But you can keep registries of all kinds of other non-financial assets on a blockchain. You can do so many different things with Bitcoin and a blockchain. And that's why I think it's going to rip through dozens of different markets. And so when they call Bitcoin a serial killer what they're what they're what he's referring to is bitcoin's effects in other industries outside of the financial industry the internet changed everything except for finance he said adding that what bitcoin is going to do to bring the internet to finance and so while the internet didn't affect finance and the financial markets very much the financial markets are in many, you know, like when you look at SWIFT, if you want to transfer money from one country to another country, most of the time that's handled by a company slash organization called SWIFT, S-W-I-F-T. And SWIFT is responsible for a lot of the banking system's movement of money between countries. The sad thing about SWIFT is it's antiquated, it's old. It doesn't move very quickly. If you want to move money from one country to another country, it can take days, a week, or several weeks. And, and that period of time is just slow because it's got to go through all kinds of different steps in order to get that money moved and transferred from currency A to currency B, whatever the currency is, in the other country. Plus... Um, they have to have, you know, the, 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 the cost of using SWIFT is extremely high because there's so much manual steps that have to be involved in order to move that money. It drives the price of moving money up dramatically. Whereas with Bitcoin, you know, it wasn't that long ago, meaning uh, about three days ago, I think it was, or four days ago. Um, it was less than a week for sure. There was over a billion dollars of Bitcoin that was moved from somebody's wallet onto the Bitfinex exchange, and it cost them 68 cents to move $1 billion worth of Bitcoin. Now, there's no other way in the financial industry or financial markets where you could move a billion dollars of value, whether it's gold or dollars or any other financial instrument where you could move it from point A to point B for 68 cents. That is phenomenal. And that is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So the crypto markets will really explode about three to nine months from now. He's very, very optimistic on what's happening in the near term. And let's get into it. From all the cycles I've seen over 35 years, I have a very strong intuition that Bitcoin will hit a record price within the next 12 months and maybe like way higher than that. 
According to him, Bitcoin correlates to the S&P 500 during panics, but the correlation is just temporary. On the contrary, Bitcoin has a very low correlation over long periods of time. The crypto investor explained that adding that when the world freaks out, it is correlated. So, you know, a lot of people that talked about how Bitcoin is not a store of value and that the, the current financial crisis is evidence of that. But I think they're using an entirely unfair way of measuring that. You know, did they ever stop calling gold a store of value? When did they call silver no longer a store of value? And yet the financial crisis hit all the precious metals and made those prices drop just the same way it has with Bitcoin. And yet those were never questioned as to whether or not they're still a store of value. But when they look at Bitcoin and saw that its price had dropped, similar to the price drop in gold, all of a sudden gold is still a store of value, but Bitcoin is not. Well, that doesn't make sense. If you're going to say that gold is still a store of value, even though it saw a dramatic price drop, then maybe your evaluation of whether or not something is a store of value is skewed when you say Bitcoin is not a store of value because it dropped. And so it, to me, that's something that, that needs to be questioned because everything dropped dramatically as people were pulling money out of all kinds of different assets into cash as the entire financial industry, stock markets and everything else crashed in the middle of March and early March. So I, I, I don't think that that, uh, and, and that was a unique, um, you know, it was something that, that hasn't happened before, something that, that, that we don't have a history of it happening. And so to use that to judge other things, I think you need to go back to, well, what is it like when you're not in a financial crisis? Um, in order to evaluate that. And so the way Bitcoin performs when it's not under a financial crisis is it has very little correlation to other assets. In other words, when the stock market goes up, Bitcoin may or may not go up. When the stock market goes down, Bitcoin may or may not go down. And so it's not really correlated uh, with the other assets out there. There have been five big downdrafts in the S&P since Bitcoin was liquid to trade, and in each of those, Bitcoin did become positively correlated with the S&P and did drop with the S&P. However, that correlation breaks down after about eight weeks, and then it goes back to essentially zero correlation. So... Um, I'm excited for the future of Bitcoin. I agree with him. I think the next three to nine months from now will be dramatic. And I think the biggest driver for the, the price changes, because look, this is my opinion. This is not financial advice. Do not take this as gospel or as a reason to purchase Bitcoin, but rather do your own research. Come to your own conclusions because you're a smart person. And so while I think the world and what's happening with cryptocurrency in India and what's happening with cryptocurrency in South America or even Venezuela, if you want to get down to a specific country, what's happening with cryptocurrency in, in uh, South Africa or even the whole con continent of Africa or individual countries like Nigeria, when you look at what's happening to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin on a global scale, you can't, you can't, I, I can't imagine how you could think any other way than, man, this thing is on the verge of exploding. It's on the verge of exploding. And so the next three to nine months, I think, will be significant. But even more, I think uh, 12 to 24 months from now, we'll see some dramatic changes, some dramatic growth. So I, I, I want to recommend that you definitely hold on for the ride and stick around and find out where things go. Um, because it looks like uh, Dan Moorhead is in the same ballpark. You know, one of the things that Dan Moorhead's business came out and said is, and I thought this, this is a quote that has stuck with me. Um, he said that anytime you have an asset that shows 235% compound annual growth over an eight-year period, that's an asset or an investment you should consider making. 
he was talking about Bitcoin when he talked about 235% annual compound growth. Um, Bitcoin has done phenomenal, and I think we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. So how can I be of service to you? Please leave your comments, suggestions, thoughts, disagreements, uh, polite disagreements in the uh, YouTube comments below. If you're on something other than YouTube, just click the button to go to the YouTube channel and you can leave your comments on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.